It is 20 minutes after sunset, and I am really hoping that we have a bit of a clearing in the clouds. <clears throat> I can see the moon right in front of me. It's uh, pretty full. Uh, today is uh, October, was it 14th, 15th? 14th of October. It happens to be Canadian Thanksgiving, and it is supposed to be overcast for the next couple of nights. A couple of days ago was the closest approach of uh, Comet, uh, I'm going to mess up this name, Suchinshin Atlas, and uh, I have not had any way to observe it since, but tonight, for a very brief period, according to uh, the weather forecast, we're supposed to see, go straight here, we're supposed to have a bit of a clearing and that might be just long enough for me to catch a bit of this comet. So I'm driving to the Milton Velodrome parking lot, which uh, abuts against farm fields, and I'm hoping to be able to get in there and uh, set up west facing in the back parking lot uh, to, well, to catch the comet. Okay, um, so no luck tonight. Uh, I was pointing at the, what I thought were roughly the coordinates of where the uh, comet was with the wide angle 14 millimeter, which was just about the direction of the sunset. But that wasn't where the comet was. And uh, I guess the phone wasn't quite calibrated for the right direction. So uh, the Sky app I was using wasn't all that helpful. But um, once I got the telescope set up, the telescope pointed in a completely more westward direction, and that's where I repointed my wide-angle lens, and there was the comet. Unfortunately, by that point, uh, clouds had rolled in, and I couldn't find anything with 135 millimeter using the telescope. So uh, cloudy the next couple of days, but... Maybe if I'm lucky, Wednesday or Thursday, I might be able to catch this thing. Uh, so, we'll, uh, we'll try for Wednesday. Keep fingers crossed. Okay, round two. Uh, I did not catch the comet the other night, but I'm heading out again, this time much earlier, and hopefully better prepared. I uh, even have a coffee with me. So I hope to get set up with ample time to... Uh, catch the comet this time provided that the skies stay clear which i hope they do but i'm seeing some clouds around the horizon so wish me luck Tonight I'm going to use a trick that I've used a couple of times. I don't want to run down my batteries by running the heating bands, so instead I'm going to use these uh, little hot hands, hot pouches, basically hand warmer pouches, that I'm going to Velcro to the lens caps. Lens caps? To the lens hoods. Right, to the front of the lenses or to the side of the lens. That I'm going to Velcro to my lenses in order to keep the dew away.
Okay, I've got my camera, I think, more or less pointed in the direction that I think the comet is going to be in if uh, it's uh, still in the same vicinity as it was a couple of days ago, albeit it's going to be a little bit higher in the sky, so I've angled the camera up a little bit. Plus, I do want to capture more of the sky and less of the ground, so uh, hopefully this is going to work out. I am all set to go. I have uh, everything laid out. I've got my laptop connected. <clears throat> I've got uh, my little 135 millimeter Rokinon set up on a uh, equatorial mount. I've got my wide angle Rokinon 14 millimeter set up on a tripod and uh, everything is powered. And I think all I need now is a bit of darker sky so that I can pull our line. Uh, the equatorial mount and just a comet so hoping that the skies remain clear it looks really beautiful right now i don't mind a little bit of clouds to the way south so long as they stay the heck away and uh this is shaping up to be a great evening uh the only thing i hadn't considered is uh, there's no bathroom that i can easily go to because i'm here by myself and i don't want to leave my gear I almost forgot I brought my binoculars so that I could look at the comet up close with my eyes as well. This parking lot was empty Monday night. There seems to be quite a few people here tonight. So that is a bit of a concern. I don't mind the overhead lamps, but if people keep driving by with uh, their headlights on, that might be an issue for me. I'm right on the edge of the field here, looking at the escarpment. And the comet should be right up there, somewhere. All right, the bathroom problem has been solved. Uh, best not to ask too many questions. And uh, now, fingers crossed, the sky is going to remain clear, at least for the duration of the comet being visible. I'm going to be able to align on Polaris. My telescope's going to work perfectly. And uh, we're going to get some wide angle, 14 millimeter shots of the night sky with a beautiful comet. And some closer up shots with 135 millimeter lens. Uh, that's going to be tracked with longer exposures. So I'm pretty excited. My polar alignment wasn't even close, uh, so I had to go back and, and redo it, but uh, once I did and turned the mount in the right direction, uh, things went a little bit smoother. And I've been snapping away with the uh, 14 millimeter for quite some time. I think I got some really nice images of uh, the comet appearing and then a little bit more centered in the field of view. And then uh, with the uh, 135 millimeter. I've been taking uh, images for the past 15 minutes, and hopefully those are going to stack well enough. That was a really awesome experience. There were a number of people who had a similar idea to come out to this velodrome, 
uh, because the parking lot overlooks uh, some fields and then we have the Niagara Escarpment in the background, uh, which made for as nice a view as, as we're going to get out here. So uh, some awesome people who were taking images as well, uh, mostly with cameras. And uh, I think I was able to capture quite a bit of the comet. I don't know how well that turned out. Um, it took uh, nearly 100 images with uh, the telescope with 135 millimeter lens. Uh, and uh, those were with guiding. Uh, and the guiding was, was fairly good. And then in... Uh, and then with the Nikon uh, shooting away with wide field, I think I captured a time lapse of the comet uh, sinking down towards the horizon as well. So looking forward to seeing how that turned out. That was two nights of comet chasing, Monday night and yesterday, Wednesday. And I think they concluded successfully. The comet is going to be around for a short while longer. So if you haven't had a chance, go out and see it. You can see it uh, definitely with binoculars still in darker areas. Uh, you'll be able to see it with your eyes for maybe a few more days as it gets more and more distant. Uh, and you'll be able to image it for a little while longer if you're taking longer exposures, especially with a tracking mount. A couple of fun details. Uh, so Comet Tsuchinchen Atlas was co-discovered uh, by the Xinjinshan observatory on Purple Mountain in Nanjing, uh, China, as well as the Atlas Robotic Observatory, that is the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, Atlas Observatory, and that one was out of South Africa, hence the name of the comet. The comet itself comes from the Oort cloud to which it is currently returning, where it will restock for its next go around the sun. This has been an extraordinary year so far for astronomical events. We've had two comets, an eclipse. Last month was an amazing moon. We've had all sorts of aurora borealis showing uh, that are normally not visible this far south. So uh, last week, uh, the aurora appeared again, and this time I was finally able to see it myself, as well as take some pictures of that. So I'm going to post those, as well as... Uh, the images that I took of Tsushin Atlas to the end of this video. Hope you guys get a chance to see this one. It truly was spectacular. Thanks for watching, and until next time, clear skies.